You're round for college baseball players. One word. One city sits central in everyone's minds as the destination. Omaha. It's here and it is day one at the Men's College World Series. Welcome back to Omaha. Florida pitcher Brandon Sproat never imagined he'd be standing here tonight about to start game one of the College World Series, let alone still be playing in a Florida uniform. See, he thought by this point he would be playing professional baseball, which is why he took last year's loss to Omaha and the regionals so hard. After that game, he walked out to the mound. He crouched down to soak it all in. And there's one lasting image that perfectly summarizes those emotions. Show you a picture. Okay. And then I mean, this is last year in the regional after we lost to Oklahoma. Oklahoma Sooners have won the Gainesville Regional. I wasn't sure if that was going to be my, my last time pitching for the Gators. So I kind of just want to go out there and soak it all in, not knowing if it was going to be my last time or not. And I mean, as you can tell, it, was, it wasn't my last time. I got and worked in mysterious ways. I mean, I wasn't sure what my future was going to hold. Came back in my fourth year, you know, not knowing what was going to happen. Um, it's kind of crazy because now I see why. You know, Sprout decided to come back after getting drafted in the third round last year. And it's crazy when you look at an image like that from last year and you compare it to last weekend when he's on a dog pile on the mound at home in Gainesville. What a difference a year makes and being able to be here fulfilling one other dream for him tonight. Yeah, KB, Kevin O'Sullivan said to us today, never in my wildest dreams did I think this guy was coming back. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good late summer recruit mm -hmm. right there because you don't think you're going to get a guy, a guy back that may hit 100 tonight. Mid to upper 90s, that's what Sprode is. But the changeup may be his best pitch. In fact, it probably it is from a swing and miss standpoint. I think the key tonight is how does Virginia handle the fastball this year? They've hit velocity pretty well. Well, their lineup is brought to you by Capital One. KP told you the particulars earlier. We showed you the stars, the roommates, and then the guy who hits behind them is mighty important. He is. Ethan Anderson's been fantastic this postseason, hitting 380, 65 ribbies a lot because Geloff and Teal are on in front of them. They got a chance to have three guys in this lineup with over 100 hits, which is nuts. They lead the country in batting average and hits. Anderson, a big reason why. Brian O'Connor is in his 20th season at the helm of this Virginia program, hired in 2003, born in Omaha, grew up across the river in Council Bluffs, Iowa, pitched here at the College World Series for Creighton and head coach Jim Hendry, who is here. Boys, this place is special, and this field is loaded. And game one earlier today did not disappoint in any way. Perfect start to the College World Series with an epic bash between those two. Blaze Brothers, what a swing of the bat. Not just on the all-name team, he's got a got game. huge tank <laughs> for Oral Roberts. Hold on, hold on. And now Virginia and Florida yeah. ready to go nice on catch. night one of this first day. Here's the sophomore shortstop, Griff O'Farrell. Excellent shortstop. First pitch swinging, rolls it into left field, and a base set off 98 from Brandon Sprout to start things. It's going to be interesting to watch the pitching in this. Not just the starting pitchers, but the staffs overall. They're, they're built very differently in terms of velocity. They are. I mean, Brian O'Connor talked about it today. So, you know, we're facing one of the highest velocity teams in this entire tournament, if not the. And they're probably the lowest as a club, but yet they're top five in the country in ERA. It's worked out okay for the Hoos. Yeah, fourth in ERA. And the great offense as well that we told you about. Eighth in the country in the runs per game. This is the junior center fielder Ethan O'Donnell. First team all ACC, a Northwestern transfer. Cuts through the heater at 97. Berkey, you saw Brandon Sprout in the Super Regionals against South Carolina last weekend in Gainesville. And the Vila was even higher than what it normally is for Sprout in the first four innings. Yeah, he was just sitting at 99 miles an hour. Gas to strike out O'Donnell at 99. There you go. That? <laughs> like that. Just like that. Right there. It's not straight either. I mean, watch the tail on this thing. It's 99 and moving away from O'Donnell right there. Four pitches so far. First was a fastball that O'Farrell singled to left. The next three right by O'Donnell. Part of a pitching staff that Kevin O'Sullivan told us earlier this year 
Might have three first rounders. What? It's a breaking ball to start out. The third baseman in the three spot. Jake Geloff named a second team All-American on Wednesday. Team leader in that OPS you see at 1165. Virginia's home run and RBI's king. And he pops this one up left side. Josh Rivera, the veteran, an excellent shortstop, is there for round number two. There are some aggressive swings in the Virginia lineup. And what's interesting is they've done very well against velocity. It's not a huge sample size, but this man digging into the box right now, Kyle Teal, is four for nine this year on fastballs 95 plus. So it's a lineup that can handle velocity. Geloff just missed that one. The ACC Player of the Year Walked out. sees a change up away to start out. Kyle Teal, who our Kylie McDaniel has going eighth overall in his mock draft, and keep an eye on him when he's in the batter's box and really when he's doing anything. He's fun to watch. Out in front, back to back change ups. Yeah, Caglione might be the most talented player, Kyle, but Teal might be the most entertaining. It was fun today talking <laughs> to Brian O'Connor about him. I mean, he's going through the whole lineup and he gets to Teal, and it's probably 10 minutes. And there's some baseball involved, but the rest is just the kind of kid that he is. 1 1 fades away. We were talking with Virginia's pitching coach, Drew Dickinson. They lost game one of their super regional. Drew Dickinson said to his wife when we lost that game we need to win these next two because America needs to get to know this kid. Mm. Sprouts to one is oh. down to Teal. We expect massive crowds for the next week and a half here at the Chuck. O'Farrell at first, two outs, the 3 1. His last foul and a full count on Teal. My man comes out of his helmet on pretty much every time he lets it rip. The smile that you see right there, folks, really won't leave his face throughout the course of the ball game, whether it's going good or bad for him. That smile maintains. Sprouts 3 2. Oh. Yanks it. And Teal is aboard, and O'Farrell bolts for third. Ryapel throw. Got him. BT Ryapel up to the task, and he nabs Griff O'Farrell, getting greedy. Before we get to the pitcher Florida will face, Nick Parker is having a conversation with home plate umpire Billy Van Raphorse and Virginia head coach Brian O'Connor. What do we think this is for a guy who in Nick Parker is making his 56th career start. So uh, he's been on this stage and presumably with the same delivery quite a bit over the last five years. And it had to be something mechanical and, and he was making a move like it looked like he has to put his hand together before he starts his move to home plate. I mean I guess good that you go out and say it before the game instead of call it if you think it's a balk. But not the way you see most of them start and this kid started a lot of them. Nick Parker. The Coastal Carolina transfer and the stuff is going to be a little bit different than we saw from Sprode. He's kind of a throwback right now. Two seamer break them all a change up and it really is anything at any count. I think that's the one thing to watch. Almost pay no attention to what the count is because he will throw any of the three at any spot and it's why he's had so much success this year. Does it very differently than Brandon Sprode does and Nick Parker on this stage face the number two overall seed. From high above Omaha Nebraska ready for the bottom of the first. That was some aggressive base running from the Hoos to end what could have been two on with two outs in the top half of the first. All right here's the freshman Kate Curlin first team all SEC. A guy who should be a senior in high school. Gators fans know this. The early enrollee by a full year. Outside. He has delivered. It's 16 home runs. I'm just going to try and stick away with that. All right. Kyle, too, will get in a lot of conversations with umpires. Outside. He will also get his pitchers a lot of strikes. Yes. One of the best receivers that we have here in the College World Series. You hear what he just said? What do you say? I'm just going to stick it right where it's at. 
Like basically saying, I'm not going to try to steal it. Yeah. I'll just show it exactly where it uh -huh. ends up. Huh? Except for that. Except he brought it back eight inches. <laughs> that is perfect. <laughs> right where I catch yep. it, kind of. Glove did not move except that little bit. We promised fun from yep. Kyle Teal. Parker's 2-1. Uh, last weekend in Super Regionals, Grady Smith was one of the umpires there in Charlottesville, Virginia. He texted Brian O'Connor afterward. He said, I've never had so much fun behind the play with a catcher. They sang together. <laughs> and you're not making that up? No. 2-2 Two -two to Curland. There you go, right on right changeup. And what's interesting about Parker, he gets a higher swing and miss on his changeups against righties as he does versus lefties. Almost, it's 11% more whiffs against righties than lefties. It's the highest swing and miss percentage of any pitch that he throws, either of the two breaking balls or the fastball. That's what happens a lot. If they get to it, they're going to hammer it foul. Why are we seeing more right on right changeups? Years ago, you would hear pitching coaches say, if you're lefty, you can't throw them a left hand. If righties can't throw them a right handers. And then I think over time, we started seeing more data to go, well, hold it. That actually works. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should throw it a little bit more. If you've got a good one, use it. In on the hands. Well, it might be 89 miles an hour, but that moved about a foot and a half. Watch. It starts on the inner third and it ends up a good six inches off the plate and that's why Curlin starts I mean, you can see where it starts. Great view right there by up camp to see where that two seamer started. It did not end up there. First hitters a strikeout for Nick Parker. Seven pitch battle he wins against Cade Curlin and now here's Florida's center fielder in the two Outside. spot. And we told you about Wyatt Lankford who was a semifinalist for the Golden Spikes Award team leader at OPS. Kylie McDaniel's got him going third overall in his recent mock draft, and it would not be surprising if he goes higher than that. No, he's a special hitter. He's done it for two years in a row. Kevin O'Sullivan says maybe the, the best one he's coached. Outside! Wow, I flew. Obviously, you got you know, Pete Alonzo, Jonathan India. Like, there's Mike Zanino, some guys that have done some amazing things in Major League Baseball. But the last two years, why Langford's put together for Sully as good as any two he can remember. 2 0 from Parker. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Just making How many of bats his freshman year? Four. Four. Four his freshman year. And the last two years, he's combined to hit right at 50 home runs. Came in as a catcher and had to learn to play the outfield. Shape, reshaped his body, has become a plus runner. And he has been a barrel the moment they put him in the lineup. Oh! <laughs> You think I could reshape my body and be a plus runner? <laughs> Talk I think to I can pull that off? <laughs> Talk to him. He'll, He'll give it a run. I'm going to find off. him this week. There's time. Yeah. Just go running with Ben McDonald. Yeah, that ended well. Yeah. Big Ben took uh, the worst of it, it sounds like. From of all things out there in the elements, a sign. Those kids Not moving. Not moving. Okay. That's up, and Langford walks. And there's a one out base runner for Florida here in the first. Take a look. This is a, some big names there on the right. But what Wyatt Langford has done over the last two years surpasses both of them. And look at the slugging percentage, guys. I know we're in a new era in college baseball, but Pete Alonso on the right is one of the most feared hitters in the world. Jonathan Indy, of course, the former rookie of the year. Wyatt Langford has been a star. Maybe a little in the shadow of Dylan Cruz over the last two years, but man, can this dude hit. Now Jack Caglione, who's maybe grabbed the shadows from Wyatt Langford as well this year, because this guy, as you said off the top, is the Shohei Otani of college baseball. They call him Jack Tati. Jeff Passan wrote a profile of Jack Caglione today. 31 tanks to lead the country and a single season Florida program record. It's more than just the power with Cags. He leads his team in hits. He's six in the country in ribbies. He is up there letting it rip, but, but he has a feel for the barrel as well. Lines this one to center. Ethan O'Donnell has to go back to make the catch for out number two as Langford retreats. Well, that was close. And that just shows you how strong he is, right? Front zone on a changeup and almost ran that one off the center field wall, even though he was full. They backed to back to him too. First one he hooked foul. That one he stayed on. This has got to be what? 
four inches, five inches mm -hmm. down, Jeez. maybe off the plate. Beautiful swing, but just a just a great pitch. It's tough to do much more with that pitch than Cags just did. So Parker dispatches Caglione. And now two outs for Florida here in the first with Langford on. For the cleanup man and the aforementioned Josh Rivera. All-American shortstop. Like Brandon Sprout, who Chris Budden told you came back for a fourth season. Rivera back as well, and man, he's made the most of it. He certainly has. Uh, Soli said he felt like a lot of pressure maybe was lifted off of him when the draft didn't go his way last year. Oh, it's interesting though, because even though maybe some pressure was lifted, he came back with with a purpose, right? The intentionality of re reshaping his body. KP, another guy maybe you could talk to, but Soli specifically pointed to of Lanford and Rivera of how these guys have changed as athletes in their time here at Florida. Inside. Backup breaking ball misses. This is a guy who last year had an OPS at 780, which is basically average mm. in college baseball. And big jumps in terms of average and slug and home runs. Kevin O'Sullivan said last weekend, personally, I think he's the best shortstop in the country. That's a strike. Two and two on Rivera. How about this season compared to his last three years? 17 home runs this year, 15 the first three. Drove in 68 this year, 67 the first three. Still 16 bags this year, six the first three. It's in three years. Can you stay still? I was trying to look at Monaco and we were bouncing all over the place up here. It's you're, early. You're kinetic, Berkey. Two outs in the first. And the 2 2. Rivera in the air, center field. O'Donnell bolts back and he's got room to end the inning. Zeros on both sides out of the gates on night one at the Men's College World Series. We told you two of the last seven national champions, Virginia in 15, Florida in 17, and a couple of programs who, going back in recent years, have been here a lot led by these head coaches. Pretty impressive stuff right there. Sully and Oak, as they call them, two of the best in the business, no question about it. Both of them with titles to boot. Kevin O'Sullivan, a Virginia alumnus, coaching Florida in this one. Right. As Brandon Sprout goes back to work with a breaking ball to start out for a strike to Virginia's five hitter and first baseman, the switch hitting Ethan Anderson. Outside. By the way, if you're new to college baseball, at this time of the year you'll see in the top left of your screen right by the pitch count we will flicker in the pitch clock and these guys especially the Florida staff they don't have to worry about no it. Sprout flies flies I mean we'll show it to you when it gets down to 10 to 12 seconds you may not see it a whole lot on the ground and Sprout snares and flips to retire Ethan Anderson. So one away and it brings up the right fielder for the Cavaliers Casey Salki who for as much as we talked about Geloff and Teal and the guys in the top five in the lineup this guy Brian O'Connor was telling us earlier today leads them in exit velocity he's got a ton of talent they, they kind of feel like maybe like Teal last year maybe next year's the year for Salki the, the talent is there and he's been hot lately hitting over 400 in the tournament. They love his ceiling though. Sophomore from Rochester, New York. Saw the elevated gas from Sprout. And it's nothing and two on the talented Salki. Breaking ball pulled. In the left, down the line, and Richie Sheikhoffer runs out of room. That's not where he was trying to go with that OG no. breaking ball there, KP. No, they were trying to tunnel off of the fastball before. You had the elevated fastball, make the breaking ball look like it, but you want it down and out of the zone, and that one probably lucky to get back. He's not giving it back, though. Nope. Get down to left. No. <laughs> not giving that back. Claim it, retain it. 0 2 again. Oh, beautiful. 101 from Brandon Sproke. 
Okay, so let's let's start the C note discussion right here as to how many of those we're going to see over the course of the week and a half. Here's one, the first one we've seen. How about 101 for you? <laughs> right after a break of ball hook down the left field line. Okay, then okay, I've got one of these. And one of those works pretty well. Oh man, how many are going to hit 100 here? Pitchers or total pitches? Pitchers. Six. I was going to say five. Really? You think more? I think the under on six. Okay. Two, two for the Gators. On a line from Anthony Stefan into center field. Second hit for Virginia. It's a two out knock for Stefan to DH here in the second. Two from the Gators. Which two? Kangs and. No, I'd say Sprout and Waldrop. Okay. Waldrop, okay. okay. A little extra adrenaline. I'm gonna say some guys are gonna grab a gear. We just saw one on one from Spro. It's a I'll decent chance we'll see it tomorrow night. Two for oh, two from flight. Tennessee, Burns and Dolander. We'll go later. Okay. okay. I'll, take, I'll take five. Skeens would be five. He's gonna hit it about a hundred times. <laughs> that just gives me one other dude to pop up. Caglione's been up to 99 yeah. and with a little extra juice, maybe. Just one other guy. I feel like there's five locks. Tied. I understand maybe the math. Floyd. Of this. I know the way it works. <laughs> five plus one. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is Henry Godbout. Eight spot, second baseman, and he lost this one. He's the second base bag. And Josh Rivera calls off Kate Curlins. Brandon Sproat is definitively in that group. We can assure you of that. This a little easier to hit than 101 on the black. All right, headlines here at the Men's College World Series. Wake Forest will step onto the stage tomorrow. The one seed and trying to change history since 1999. Five of the eight teams here, they've already got a national title. And how about Oral Roberts, the third regional four seed. So that's like a, a 13 seed or worse in college basketball. Winners earlier today and the three biggest stars in the sport. We weren't kidding about the star power we've got everywhere. Wake Forest has a ton of it as well. They play in the day game tomorrow against Stanford. As we start the bottom of the second here on day one. Florida Bats with five, six, and seven. This is the veteran catcher, BT Riapel. Like Nick Parker, a Coastal Carolina transfer. These guys were roommates. Their freshman year. Yeah, this AB I think means a little something to both of these guys. A little something more than the, than the obvious. We talked to Kevin O'Sullivan this morning. He said later on in the day he had a one-on-one -on -one conversation set with BT Riapel because he wanted to go to BT Riapel to get the scouting report on Parker. Just those two. I love it. Let's start there and then we'll bring everybody else into the room. BT is certainly part of this coaching staff. He is a player coach for the Gators. Pops up a changeup and that fades foul. It's two having an two. interesting postseason. Three for 24 in the NCAA tournament, all homers. He had four hits in the SEC tournament. Three of them were homers. So uh, he's been efficient with his base knocks here in the postseason. They have all been very timely. He's got a knack to come up with the big hit, especially in the big spot, too. Did that with one of the walk-offs, was a, one of his home runs in Hoover at the oh, SEC no. tournament. And he runs it full against Nick Parker. Yep. Luke Heyman is next. Freshman DH down, and Ryapel coaxes a leadoff walk in the second. Hey, for more coverage of the NCAA Men's College World Series and for interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Here is Luke Heyman. He's had a great freshman season, SEC all freshman team. See the OPS a little below a thousand with 11 home runs. He's a Ball big down. time recruit and he's delivered in year one in Gainesville. Special season. It, it was a crazy talented group of freshman hitters in the Southeastern Conference. So Heyman got a little bit lost in the shuffle of that group. But boy, 
a very bright future. Grabs this one into the hole and past the dive of Griff O'Farrell. And in the left, Heyman singles, and the first two are on for the Gators here in the second. A little surprised they're not in the six hole here with Parker on the bump. KP, the shortstop. O'Farrell maybe not shaded a little more. Nah, he, he really wasn't shaded much at all. That's he, what I'm saying. Was, if anything, he was shaded up the middle. I mean, are you surprised that with a sinker ball or changeup guy that you wouldn't play a little more in the six hole? Yeah, I mean, obviously, they've, they've, well, they've got scattering reports all over the place, too. But yes, with that fastball that more times than that's going to come in towards the barrel. Was a little bit. So I, I thought that was at least going to be an out when it was hit. Mm -hmm. Then you look up and O'Farrell had no chance to get to it. So double play depth is a little bit different if the guy's throwing sinkers. Well, I mean, we've seen this all year. You over the guy on first base, and sometimes double play depth takes a back seat to what the real scouting report tells you. And ultimately, if you're going to pull to the pull side and it takes a ground ball to the second base double play away, plenty of teams are doing that. The alignment from up high. This is Tyler Shelma, seven spot right fielder, and he lines one up the middle on the hop. Got out to O'Farrell, the spin, is in. not in time. Virginia gets one, and the Gators have him at first and third with one out. That was pretty nifty right there. Got out to his right. The flip just took O'Farrell just a touch the other way, or I think they turned that one, but O'Farrell has to 360 to try to finish this one off. You see the ball a little bit too much to his glove side. And Sheldon does a nice job of hustling that one out. And here's a great run scoring opportunity here for the Gators with the veteran Halter up. Colby Halter, three year starter, third baseman in the eighth spot. He's had some big moments in this postseason run for Florida to get here. This Florida team, of course, back at the Men's College World Series for the first time since 2018. And Chris told us off the top how last year ended. Florida fans certainly know that. And for Kevin O'Sullivan to get back here now five years, even if not that many tournaments later. Yeah, just, just three tournaments. We consider that a drought for what Kevin O'Sullivan yeah. has done. 15 chances to get to Omaha. He's been here eight times as the head coach of the Gators. Of course, the COVID year, but what a run. A big spot, like you said, for Halter. Oh. Takes down. With a fastball for ball one. The Gators don't do this often, but with a guy like Sprout on a night where the wind's blowing in, this is a great opportunity to safety and just get the first one. I know you get your catcher running, but it's a double play waiting to happen with Parker on the mound. 13 Park. sack bunts on the year for Florida as a mm -hmm. team. Halter has six. So if there's a guy to do it, you would think this may be the one. Geloff creeping in at third. Outside. Halter doesn't square, and it's 2-0. Yeah, I don't think they'll do it here at 2-0, but when I say safety, I mean instead yeah. of the suicide squeeze where Rypel just flat out tries to steal the bag as the pitcher kicks, the safety is the runner waits for the ball to get down and then breaks. But I think 2-0, you let him swing it here. So Geloff backs up. Parker deals, and Halter slices this one toward foul oh, ground. Long way to go for Harrison Didaway. And into the seats. And if you're Nick Parker, you get some information there on the approach of Kobe Halter, right? It's a 2 0 fastball, and he slices one oppo foul, right? Definitely letting that ball travel. You, you know, these Gator hitters have the change up in their mind. And if you look at Parker statistically, 2 1 is definitely a an off speed count. So don't be surprised if he gets it right here. But late on the heater. Yeah, sometimes the hitter tells you what you should mm -hmm. throw next. And, and that one, he definitely wasn't looking 2 0 fastball. Outside. Change that message. Three and one. Sorry, that's your job. <laughs> Please do it as much as you'd like. <laughs> Kyle Peterson, Chris Burke, Mike Bodico, Chris Budden down at field level. Our entire crew behind the scenes. Big spot for Florida in the second with no score yet. Three one. Alter takes a strike with a fastball. Now 3-2. I mean, if you're Halter, you're, you're just looking away. It's either going to be the two-seamer away or the change-up away. You just get your chest out over the plate, see the ball deep. Best-case scenario, you lift the ball to the outfield, get this first run in. 3-2 is line towards short and past O'Farrell in the left. Florida strikes first, courtesy of Colby Halter. That 
is how you do it right there. Colby Halter was put on the bench a little bit down the stretch, and now he is back and hitting over 350 in the postseason. You can't do it any better than that. That is exactly what we talk about. Keep your nose down, keep your chest down, stay within what the approach was to start the ball game. A veteran AB by the veteran third baseman. It'll prompt a mound visit from Virginia's pitching coach, Drew Dickinson, after Colby Halter comes through again. Going back to the regional final, game seven, as Florida won three straight elimination games. Going back to that one against Texas Tech, he's six for his last 11, and he's been driving in some runs. If you get the bottom part of this order that's hitting consistently, yeah. this, this is as dangerous of an offense as there is in the country. Well, this is down to the ninth spot, Richie Sheikoffer, left fielder and a sixth-year senior who like Colby Halter to Berkey's point. Been getting more playing time here over these last few weeks. Richie now at his third school. Started his career at Maryland for a year and then four years at Rutgers. Transferred to Florida coming off his best season of the four with the Scarlet Knights. This is just his 11th start of the season and it comes in the College World Series. Down for ball one from Parker. Virginia's coaching staff talks a lot about Nick Parker's ability to manage innings. He's got to do that here with a run already in. He's no stranger to traffic. 1 0. That's down. And Florida's been patient. It's funny, though. Sometimes a guy like Parker uses being behind in the count to his advantage, right? Because then the heater, hitter speeds up. The hitter starts thinking bigger things, right? I'm in a 2 0 count. That's where the sinker gets a rollover ground ball. That's where the changeup gets a disconnected swing. Got to be patient here for Shikoff. Swings on a 2 0 and lofts it to left. And Harrison did away. Hey, for out number two. Like that. That works. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a really good pitch to hit. And what you like there from Parker is. Trust your stuff, right? You get the 9 0 hitter up on a day where it's tough to get it over anybody's head. That looked more like the four seamer up in the zone, where he was really trusting his defense to play behind him there. Thoughtful guy, Nick Parker is. Drew Dickinson told us this morning he's going to be an outstanding pitching coach one day. He's got two outs. The lineup turns over for Florida, and this is Cade Curlin. Struck out on that sinker in, and now strike one on the outside edge. Call that one a slider. It's more of a cutter. Mm -hmm. It's just got a little bit, and hitters give up on it, maybe thinking it's a two seamer going to come back in, and it, it's it's kind of the miss the barrel kind of movement instead of necessarily swing and miss movement. Ah! Over two. That's a great one to back to back. So your cutter on the outside part of the plate, you give up on, and you come back and go back to a two seamer, and, and it leaks right back over. It looks the same coming out of the hand. It just moves two different ways. For Parker to power ahead, nothing and two. Odd uh, Cade Curlin. The pitch. A uh, pop. One more time. And don't, don't forget, he got him last time on a two seamer in. What's he done this time? Everything away. It might be a sinker coming back in here in Cade Curlin's future. On the 23rd pitch of Nick Parker's inning, stays away. It's interesting. You got a change up in his last at bat, sinker in his last at bat. This time, I mean, nothing has even approached the inner third of the plate. With Shellnut at second and Halter at first. 2 2. Curland on the ground to short at Griff O'Farrell, who flips. And Florida leaves two, but strikes first here at the second against Nick Parker. Welcome back to Omaha. Brandon Sproul throwing the heat today, and he's got a motto that he's been living by this year, and it's written underneath his hat. It's called, As Hard As You Can. He was seeing a mental coach who's asked him, hey, when you 
talk to yourself. Do you only do it in your head or do you do it out loud? He said, because if you're only talking to yourself in your head, sometimes you start thinking about too many thoughts. So if you watch Sproda on the mound, he'll actually talk to himself out loud. It was pretty funny after that last inning. He comes into the dugout and his teammates are making fun of him. They said, hey, after that strikeout pitch, definitely saw you turn around, look at the jumbotron and see how fast you hit him. He said, absolutely, it's in bright yellow. Why wouldn't I? Uh, in bright yellow this time, KB, it's only 98. It still works. It gets a ground out from Harrison Didowick out of the ninth spot for Virginia. Get me over 98 mile yeah. hour fastball right there. If I threw 101, I'd turn around and look at it too. Yeah. And then I'd probably pat myself on the back and <laughs> smile and tip my hat at the scoreboard and everything else. You can almost see it under that lid as hard as you can, written under there for Brandon Sprout. Griffo Farrell, the leadoff man, singled against Sprout to start this ball game. Sprout says a couple of things to himself out there as well, in addition to that. First, it was let it eat, and now a lot he says attacking the storm when you see him talking out loud and not keeping it in his head. What did you used to say on the mound? I'd sing. Oh, okay. Mm. Good singer. Yodeled. <laughs> little EDM when you were out there. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, that's that's my speed. I'm trying to be quicker. That was your speed pregame. Ice yeah. tea. Still got a little left. Should have got sweet tea today. O'Farrell on the ground and Josh Rivera collects. And a couple of ground ball outs for Sprout in the third. Sunday, the Red Sox host the Yankees in the second of back to back Sunday night baseball meetings between these two. Coverage starts at 6 Eastern with baseball tonight's Sunday night countdown. Then Yankees Red Sox at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. So two outs, no one on in the third. And here's Ethan O'Donnell from the two spot. Struck out on merely 99. His first time. Twenty four doubles for Ethan O'Donnell last year at Northwestern. Brian O'Connor said we thought a lot of that because playing in Chicago in Evanston more accurately when coming in off the lake anyone who can hit twenty four doubles there will take them. It's not exactly balmy there until May 1st either. I mean if you're putting up extra base hits in that area of the country they count and it's carried over. But this Virginia team's interesting right last in the field in homers but first in the country in yeah. doubles. So even though they haven't hit the ball out of the ballpark a ton oh. compared to the field, there's plenty of power in this lineup. How much stock do you put into doubles in this ballpark the way it plays? I'd say more, more than in some regards, more than homers, right? Because doubles usually carry, they usually travel. That doesn't mean ballpark elements don't help doubles as well, but in today's college baseball game where there's smaller parks and the ball is jumping, most of your really well hit high flat balls are home right whereas if you're hitting a ton of doubles that means there's a bunch of flatter trajectory results and those usually travel regardless of the ballpark and regardless of the wind conditions. It's like that stinger two iron you hit. Just like that. Yep. Wind doesn't hit it it just barrels right through it. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Three two. Oh. Hits. Ethan O'Donnell at an uncomfy 98. It's the first big miss today. And misses have been smaller. This is just a tugged fastball that smarts. So Ethan O'Donnell is on with two outs in the third. Virginia down a run. And now Jake Geloff who popped a short his first time against Brandon Sprove. Yanked. There's two in a row. And this is usually where BT Rod pedals go out there and maybe slow him down because what you don't want is big misses against Geloff. This is a, a there he goes. Good call. Yeah. Just and you see Halter running in there too. Like this is, hey dude, what's up? We're, we're cruising along. It ground balls the shortstop, which we love, and now all of a sudden we're yanking balls all over the strike zone. Let's let's calm down. I was talking with BT Rypel a few weeks ago, 
and he made it very clear he's not afraid to say really anything <laughs> too out of bounds to his pitchers. I think he's earned that. Absolutely has. And he respected on the mound too. If it's not all the time. Yeah. If they catch you at the right time. Yeah. He's got feel, that's yeah. for sure. Give me a minute. The battery sets back up ahead of a 1-0 to Jake Geloff. He's aggressive. We told you he will be, and he went around. And that's the difference maker for Spro. The ability to just flip that bigger, slower breaking ball, slow the hitter down, steal a strike, especially in a hitter's count. It also slows his body down. I mean, the two misses were fastballs. That one slows him down. And a little bit surprised they didn't double up. Safe. That that almost helps you course correct on your own. So often, like if you're missing with a fastball, you want to. Guys keep throwing fastballs over and over and over again. And a lot of times you're getting quicker and quicker and quicker because you're trying to make it right. But off speed pitches generally make you slow your body down a little bit, sometimes lock that fastball back in. Two and two now on Geloff. With O'Donnell aboard at first and two outs. Got and they got him. Caglione runs out O'Donnell. And now Rivera finishes him off. Caught him perfectly extending that lead. This is timed up, man. O'Donnell 18 stolen bases on the air. Watch the first move. That first step. Now he's done. Caglione gets him going. Rivera gets him going full speed and tags him. It's still 1 0 Gators. Virginia has ran into a couple of outs now on the base pads. They trail Florida 1 0 as we go to the bottom of the third at Charles Schwab Field on day one at the College World Series. Glad you're with us for two of the top seven teams in the country in this loaded field. Well, one. Two, three, and four for the Gators, starting with Wyatt Langford. The superstar walked his first out. Nick Parker deals. And Langford pops it up. On the infield towards second at Henry Gatbell. What a way. How we doing on uh, day one here, guys? Polos fitting okay? Everything yeah, up I'm, to your usual happy. standard? What? Happy. Wouldn't mind a snow cone, but yeah. not as good as those guys are doing. Did you have salmon pregame? Oh, yeah. Okay. Tuna? You? you? A salmon and tuna. You. Okay. Good for you. KP, what was on the menu? For that, you? salmon or tuna. Okay. Jack Outside. Caglione takes the fastball for ball one. Caglione lined to center. Nearly got it his first time here in Omaha. Teal pointing at Parker. And Caglione lashes it foul. That was the old stay in your legs. <laughs> that Drew Dickinson told us <laughs> is his number one coaching what it goes for, to. for all his pitchers. A tonic that solves all. a boy. Make a play, dude. Oh, that's why you bring it. Oh, yeah. Get new you. shades, but you can't get another ball. And it was from Jack Tawny. Look at the hair. It's it's not just the snow cone. I was going to say, they stole it and just dumped it on their heads. <laughs> it's multitasking. The one and two, the count. Uh, Jack Caglione. Back foot breaking ball. You know, we were talking with Caglione yesterday. I just said to him, what's this season been like for you? He said, in one word, I would probably say unexpected. He said he thought 15 home runs was possible. He said he didn't think. 31 was going to happen. Stay in your legs. That's fisted and popped up. And Kyle Teal holding on to the mask for the second out. That is a clinic and how a guy that doesn't have plus velocity can still jam one of the most dangerous and fastest bat sw swing guys in, in the sport. So a little cutter. This is that short little cut piece, KP, right in 
on the thumbs of Caglione, and it's just that late movement, just enough to get it off the barrel, even though it's only 86, 87 miles an hour. Here's Josh Rivera with two outs. First pitch swinging, line to left, and Didawick is there in a 1 2 3 8 pitch third. Kyle Teal will bat when we come back for the fourth in Omaha. Fourth inning on the way at the Men's College World Series, Virginia and Florida. He's got the 1 0 lead with Virginia's heart of the lineup coming up here at the Chuck. Great crowd on hand on day one. What a night to watch a ball game. Yeah. 85, 80 degrees, a little overcast, a little breeze. We call this the marine layer here. Okay. <laughs> Very similar. It comes right off the Missouri River. This yeah. is our version of the marine layer. Oh, what did Jake Geloff is down for Brandon Strote. Similar to the one KP we saw at Stanford last weekend in the Super Regionals for Stanford, Texas. Outside. It's chilly out there. I think we'll need the pullovers this week. Hmm. Had we remembered to bring them. By we, you mean me. Yes. That's a yanked fastball again. Three and one from Brandon Sproat. What's that? What's that, KP? Uh, the, the little the pedestrian bridge? Yeah. No, it's the Bob Carey pedestrian okay. bridge that separates the great state of Nebraska from oh. the great state of Iowa. Geloff walks, leadoff man out against Sproat here in the fourth inning. Something to watch, man. These last two innings, the, the, the fastball command is, is kind of left a little bit. Pretty good the first two innings. Last two innings been all over the place, and Virginia bailed him out. Donald getting mm -hmm. picked off at first base. So Geloff on, and now Kyle Teal ran it full and walked his first time against Sproat back in the first, but then Griff O'Farrell got thrown out at third by BT Ryapel, the Gators catcher. One oh Teal bounces it up the middle Rivera to the bag for two much needed for Brandon Sproat. I'm going to bail you out too. Perfect positioning and this is the guy you want to, the ball hit to as much as possible. Rivera playing up the middle, smart by Sprout there to get that hand out of the way. An easy six unassisted double play over to Caglione. Gator shortstop is as smooth as they come. Now Ethan Anderson. Is Rivera the best defensive shortstop for your money in the country? That I've seen. And, and you know, the, the fielding percentage, there's a few few errors in there. He's got eight errors. But there's so much more to playing shortstop than just an error from okay. time to time. The range is immense. He can go get fly balls. The best I've seen in the college game, arm strength going to his right. Like he he checks every box. And then when you think about the offensive side of things. This is lined down the line of fair ball for Ethan Anderson to the backside. He legs for second with a two out double here in the fourth. Another Virginia double as they add to their nation leading total a missile. Down the left field line, the ability for left-handers to stay on that running fastball away from Brandon Spro is going to define the at bats, especially by the left-handed hitters, because that ball is just darting away from the barrel, and Anderson does a great job there of staying on it and rifling in the corner. And KP, I think Soli's going out there to have a chat with Spro because the fastball command has certainly waned here in the in the fourth really started in the third. Here's the thing though like first two innings he was stealing a, a ton of strikes with a curveball which was good and it was kind of back elevating the fastball he hadn't really thrown the curveball very much in the last two innings it's fastball and the change ups that he's thrown have been missing arm side which usually means you open up a little bit too early he didn't get all the way through it and that ball takes off I wouldn't mind seeing him throw a few more breaking balls and they start right here. Against Casey Sauke, who was the recipient of that 101 that Chris told you sent. Spro looking at the video board. Back in the second, 
And that's a fastball again. Sprouts 1 0. Bounce foul. One of the change up there. So 99 mile hour heater yanks to the glove side, which is where a ton of his misses have been, especially against right handed hitters. But comes back, the ability to come back and throw that change up in a swing count. Such a valuable weapon. One one to Southie. Oh, and on the hands with a change. Now this is where you'd like to go back to that four seamer away that we we saw earlier that was one on one. See nobody up in the Gator bullpen. But can you command it right? You've gone back to back change ups both that ran in on the hands of Salki. You certainly have him set up for gas on the outside corner if you can execute the pitch. Some of the chatter from Brandon Sproke with two outs, man at second in the fourth and a one two. It was the gas to the glove side. And that was close, right? I mean, that, that's a good pitch. Nice job there by Salki of fighting it off. I mean, it's just, it's amazing how today's college game, we can be so normalized with 99 on the outside edge. Anderson aboard, one two again. Good pick by Rappel. Yeah, it's an average fastball velo of 96.2. Average. For Brandon Spro. And really, the last month or so, I would say that's a couple clicks higher. Yep. Two two all the way. Salki rolls it to third at Colby Halter. Heading over. Spro leaves Anderson at second, and we're in the middle of the fourth. In a one run game. And this one is hammered to left field. Did he do it? Yes, sir. It's not exaggerating to say this College World Series has everything because you have all the star power and the heavyweight teams, and then you got Cinderella, too, as a four seed. Yeah, and you've got big leaguers all over the place. I mean, we've got power numbers both on the mound at the plate. We've got speed, and we haven't seen a lot, but Virginia can, can show you that. I mean, Virginia's not afraid to steal some bags. I, I don't remember a College World Series that has this much individual star power as we have this year. Oral Roberts. Blaze Brothers is a star now after his three run shot in the ninth in the first game of the College World Series, the 76th edition. Bottom four, five, six, and seven for the Gators, 2 0 on their catcher, BT Ryapel, who walked and scored back in the second. McParker's pitch is a strike. I'm not sure what was more impressive from, from Blaze Brothers, the, the three run homer or the, the backflip? At the, like, I'm, I'm torn. He had me on both. Yeah. 2 1. Outside. This is outside, as Billy Van Rapphorst tells everyone. Rappel toward the gap and left center field, and he splits it and runs it all the way to the wall. BT Rappel with a leadoff double in the fourth. And he earned that by spitting on that 2 1 change up the pitch before, right? So just leave that one alone, earn yourself a better one, a sinker that stays up. And what a move through the back of the baseball by BT Rappel. Staying in the backside gap, which you have to do off a guy that's going. Sinker ball's running away from you. That is a bullet to get it started for the Gators. It's his old roommate. Yeah, off his roommate. Yeah. Serious bragging rights. Nick Parker said yesterday, it's pretty neat after all these years, four years later, that we've run back into each other on this stage. We came in the batter now. He's singled to the pull side in the second. So far, Parker hadn't gotten him out. 
Oh, I mean, walk, that's the only run of the game. Right? Pell with a leadoff walk in the second, came around to score on Halter's single, and now a leadoff double here in the fourth. For Ryan Pell, his second year with Florida. For Parker, his first with Virginia. Out. That's outside, one and one. You see, we talked about that six hole base hit that Heyman got last time. Griffin O'Farrell at shortstop. Playing a little deeper, a little further to the pool side now, this time up. Of course, not a double play scenario. Heyman needs to use the backside of the field here to get that run into third. And if you look at the spray charts for Heyman, there's a ton of pull side contact. All right, so we played a long time ago, some of us longer than others. But I just remember consistently when there was a guy on first base, it was double play depth, double play depth. What's your take on the way that it is now? Because it's not always, and I know there's nobody on first base right now. But we were talking about what happened earlier. What's, what's your take on the way that it's played now? Well, I think, you, you know, depth and positioning are two different things, right? You can still be in tighter and over some where I could still get to the bag if the ball is hit to the second base side, right? Meaning so, in closer to home plate. Yeah, but more towards the six hole. So there's ways you can do it that aren't necessarily by the book the way we used to do it. We came in a right. Uh, Casey Salki. Ryan Pell tags. Uh -oh. Salki's throw is a dart. Got him. Wow. Catcher tags up, and Casey Salki guns him down. I wasn't really close. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Watch him work through it, Berkey. Watch him work through it. How about the DK from Dell FKP? Look at him. Just standing there dead on like the ball's not coming. Ryan Pell is giving it all he can, but this is a big league throw from Casey Salki, and you love the effort, effort by Ryan Pell, but as you said, KP, that was not particularly close and a huge out right there for the Virginia defense. Set up two outs, no one on for Tyler Shellnuts. And we talked about the ability that Casey Salki has. This guy was a freshman All-American, first teamer last year, according to our friends at D1 Baseball, and has huge upside. You said they expect a big year from him next year after maybe a little bit slower sophomore year. Shellnut down the line to left toward the pole, and that twists foul. Now each team has made it out at third. You, you don't you don't fault Ryan Pell for trying to get to third with with less than two outs, but the out by O'Farrell obviously was was much different the first time around for the Hoos. But boy, that's a big opportunity miss. But it's all it's all because of Salki. I mean, he, that throws a few feet either direction. Ryan Pell's in there. It's just an incredible play. One one to Shellnut. Look at that right in the corner, right? Barely. I love hearing the conversation between catcher and home plate umpire. That might have been Shellnut. Oh, really? That might have been Shellnut asking, asking where it was. Was that right on the corner? One two. Shellnut towards short and off the heel of the glove of Griff O'Farrell. So Tyler Shellnut is on with two outs here for Florida. It's a hit in the fourth. I thought O'Farrell did the right thing here. Try to get deep and see if you can glove it. Because if he goes shallow, it would have been a really nasty in-between hop. I thought that was the way to play it. He's just unable to finish it off. And to be honest, I don't know that he throws Shellnut out anyway. So an infield single. And with two outs in the fourth, now Colby Halter from the eight hole. Backside RBI single his first time after he ran it full against Nick Parker in the second. That's where most of the contact goes for Colby Halter. The opposite way. Kyle Teal encouraging Nick Parker. On a 1-0, Halter squares and then pulls his leg out of the way as well. 2-0. Walter's got to watch that back foot when he goes to bunt. That, that left out of the box. It's almost on the plate completely. I like the idea right there with, with two outs. Maybe try to, to steal one with Geloff playing back. But in the 2 0 count, I got to believe he's pulling the trigger right here. Parker's pitch. 
Lifted foul. With Shelnut on and two outs. 2-1 to Halter. And that's fouled away. Two and two. What's interesting is just as you just said, Halter loves to use the backside field. We haven't seen any cutters into Halter. No front hip sinkers, no cutters. Yet he wasn't afraid to ram it in there against Caglione. It, it seems like there I mean, should be a cutter in there somewhere. The easiest pitch for a left-hander to hit that likes to go the other way is a two-seam that's moving away. Yeah. You just stay on it and take it where it's moving. Two two. Off that. Down with a fastball. Now that was in, but looked accidental. Yes. And a three two. I mean, if he hasn't, if he hasn't gone into this point, I can't imagine he's doing it here with the runner moving. This is one of those deals where, as big as this outfield is, if Halter shoots a gap or hits one that makes one of the corner outfielders run towards the line, Shelnut's got a chance to score here. Halter's had some good abs. His first two trips. Parker's payoff. Ball four, Ball side. four. Colby Halter with a hard earned free pass. And Florida's got two odd with two outs against Nick Parker. That's two really good at bats today by Halter. I mean, the single's a difference maker in the second, and that time works all the way to get a 3 2 walk, keep this inning over. And it goes down to Richie Sheikoffer. Flew to left his first time in the second. She Comfort moved into the starting lineup the final couple of games of the regional against Texas Tech and then started in the super regional against South Carolina. That's a strike at the top of the zone. What was the word you were using on catchers steal on the high strike? Dunking. Dunking. I, I, I like that terminology. I heard that from, I believe it was the Virginia coaching staff earlier this year, in relation to Teal. The, the best work from outside of the zone back in. So it's not moving out and tugging it back in. The best are starting out of the zone. And then that movement with the glove as the ball comes in is already starting to bring it back. Two on, two out, and at 0 2. Pulled toward right center. Ethan O'Donnell on the move to make the catch. Well, he's not at his best. He's not as sharp as he typically is, but he's doing a great job of managing innings and not giving in and making big pitches. And we're making nice plays, too. You told me after the Super Regional, you go back, you look at the diaries of your past years here. What were the final words to the team before they came out tonight that you wanted to remember after those reflections? Well, just be yourself, right? Not try to do more than you're capable of doing. Remember what got you here, because that formula is successful also here in Omaha. Appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And he's been here a lot. His recruiting pitch is in the 20 years that he's been at Virginia. I think it's only two recruiting classes, he says, haven't been here. that haven't been. He's here as a player, too. It's Creighton Blue Jay days. All right. We're not here. <laughs> he's up 10th Street, it was. 13th. I believe he's there. He's on the statue outside. As the legend goes. Well, his team down to run to Florida, and that's a good changeup from Brandon Sproat to Anthony Stefan out of the seventh spot. That, that's his best pitch, and that's exactly the design that he's looking for. Oh. You see now the, the fastball strikes. maybe start to tick down a little bit here in the middle innings. That one 97. Cut and a miss. Back to the change it looked like from Sproat to get Stefan. So the difference was second and third inning, he was running away from it a little bit. So it flattened out and it was moving well off the plate. This is what happens when you do get over the top. Go ahead, Berkey. When you get over the there top of that change up and stay through it, hands come over the top, it stays a little bit truer as far as horizontal and goes straight down. Oh, one. Starts with a fastball to Henry Godbow, second baseman who popped a short his first time. Brandon Spro told us yesterday the changeup has progressed a lot for him, and he gets a silly amount of swing and miss. 
on the changeup, like you were talking about earlier, Berkey, and it's half the strikeouts right. that Sproat oh, yeah. gets are on the changeup. It's, it's 53, 54 percent swing and miss on the on the changeup, and the D1 average about you know, mid 30s, so 20 percent higher than the average college changeup. That it, it it, obviously the the mid to upper 90s heater helps with that, but you can see the late dive on that pitch. It's got tremendous depth. Well, it's a rarity too. I mean, you don't see a lot of guys that are way high velocity guys even back to back there. Way high velocity guys that have really good changes Thank you. because it's more of a feel finesse pitch than it is just grab it and throw it. But he's got the rare ability to throw both. His one two to God Bell is on the edge through another. Three in a row against the right hander. That one's been fairly important this inning. It's Stefan swinging just a minute ago, or Stefan swinging, excuse me, and then this time goes right on right to God Bell. Three in a row right on right. You don't see that very often. First two we fouled off, that one he couldn't pull the trigger. Now Harris is good to it. Remember what Kevin O'Sullivan said to us this morning, too, about Sproat? The changeup has been his savior this year because he now has multiple weapons if guys are cheating to his fastball. Or maybe in this case, if he hasn't had the fastball command. Well, then, and then there he dumps in the breaking ball. Right? And so as he's getting here where the fastball we've seen this inning, it's been more 94 to 97. The ability to steal strikes with that curveball is huge, too. Off speed he lets go of, and then he tells you about it. He lets go. Side. No, that was change up. He, he just shanked. pulled all the way across. See if his pinky's the last thing to touch this thing. This one, he just yeah, he got around it a little bit. You can see the spin is totally different. That's what happens. You want your index finger and, and your ring finger to be the last two to touch that change up. If your pinky's the last one to touch that change up, it's going to do that. It's going to cut or go to the glove side when you, you really don't want it to go there. Oh, one. So back to the top of Virginia's lineup to Griff O'Farrell. Singled to the pull side his first time and then grounded out to short against Brandon Sproat, number 71 on Kylie McDaniel's draft rankings. Ball! Breaking ball misses 2 0. Two good takes by O'Farrell. Those pitches just missed. And now here in a 2 0 count, you're hunting a heater. First team all ACC shortstop. Swinging away with a 2 0 fastball he got. O'Farrell, a freshman All American last year, and he's built on it in year two. So the man aboard the 2 1. And he lines it foul 2 and 2. O'Farrell's been swinging a good bat in the NCAA tournament. Came here 13 for 30. A pair of extra base hits in the Super Regional, including a home run in game two of a Super that went three against Duke. The one and only home run of the season for Griff O'Farrell. Backs against the wall, and he set the tone. Didowick goes. And it kind of miss. Sproat strikes out O'Farrell and fans three. Kevin O'Sullivan with Chris Budden when we come back at the halfway point. Welcome back to Omaha. Gators up by one in the bottom of the fifth. Joined now with Kevin O'Sullivan. Had a couple conversations with Brandon Sproat. What is the message that you want to relay to him? No, it looked like his, his tempo kind of slowed down a little bit, and he was pulling his pitches for a couple innings to, to uh, uh, glove side, but he made a good job. He's been pitching great. For all the guys, they've never been on this stage before in this ballpark. What have you seen out of them early? They've been great. I mean, we're playing clean baseball, and so is Virginia. It's been it's been a really good baseball game so far. Appreciate it, Sully. Yeah, thank you. They come here on a five-game winning streak, during which they've outscored teams 30 to seven after they had to start winning elimination games in their regional a couple weekends ago. Yeah, got a little tight for them, right? They lost back-to-back -back home regionals. They were. You know, feeling a little bit of the pressure as they were number two national seed, but man, the pitching staff has just been carrying this team. The offense has hit the ball at the ballpark. It hasn't been maybe vintage Florida offense, but the pitching staff has done the heavy lifting. One nothing lead for Florida, and Cade Curlin, the leadoff man, goes first pitch swinging against Nick Parker to Casey Salki for out number one. 
This is kind of what we've expected from Nick Parker and Brian O'Connor said to Chris that maybe doesn't have his best stuff in this one but again that phrase he manages innings and now he goes third time through against these big bats. He doesn't need his best stuff. I mean he's, he's one of those guys that can get by because it, it may not be overall stuff when he throw I mean he throws two different breaking balls when you throw four different pitches. Well out. And you operate in a way that you don't really mind when you throw them. You only really need one or two to get going. He's got to find which those are. And so yeah it may not be as, as sharp as he's been. Down one, nothing. He's only given up four hits. Wyatt Langford rolls this one foul up the line, one and one on the Florida stud center fielder who has walked and popped to second. That one's probably been his best one mm -hmm. tonight. Is that little cutter that's about five miles an hour off of his fastball, but there really hadn't been anybody take a good swing on that. No, you see, Langford didn't see that at all, right? He fortunate that that ball went foul because he hit that right off the cap of the bat. That's a spot he uses it a lot too. Brian O'Connor said to us earlier this year early in counts to right hand hitters yes, he did. and then he doubles up on it to make it one and two as Langford went around and that one had a little more lateral break yeah. to it a little more sweep to that one. Just, if he throws it again I think he'll add more it's one of those to where down count steal a strike get to one strike add a little bit more Langford drills this one to deep left center and O'Donnell. With room. Nearly got it. 408 to dead center field here at the check uh, at the Chuck. The wind blowing kind of off the right and over towards the third base dugout. That ball is probably 400 feet. Yeah, it's probably blowing just enough right there. Those flags aren't moving. I think Langford, that one just carries out to center field. 108 off the bat of Wyatt Langford. We call that par for his course. Jack Get Caglione over, over. gets a hanger and he chops it to first and Ethan Anderson gets the out to make it a one two three for Nick Parker on just a half dozen pitches in the fifth. Eight of the sixth it's one nothing Gators and uh, somebody found their change up. It was Brandon Sproat back in the fifth inning. He had two strikeouts in the inning coming in. And struggled with this one two oh, innings before he just struggled the last inning. That was a third of three in a row to God about. Three strikeouts in the inning, all three on the changeup. Berkey, that one plays. Yeah, it does. And when he gets it going, that's what you're going to get a ton of swings and misses. Fourth year junior who's put together a great season. You see his outs break down in this one with the five Ks. He's ready to embark on two, three, and four right. and starts with a breaking ball to steal a strike early on to Ethan O'Donnell. How about this with Sproke? Courtesy of our friends at 643. The swing and miss percentage on the change within the zone is 40%. That's that's when it would have been a called strike. Outside of the zone, it just goes north from there. But that, that just tells you how good it is because even when it's a strike, they have a hard time putting it play. Doubles up on it and gets a roll of foul. So for context, we said the swing and miss rate on his changeup is 53%. Berkey, you gave the collegiate average. You look at big league starting pitchers and the best swing and miss rates on changeups, it's right about 53% Shane McClanahan. So that's what we're talking about in dealing with tonight. Oh, and he hit 101 too <laughs> earlier in this one. And what's wild is his mate that's going to throw game two for the Gators, Hurston Waldrop, has a split finger that has a higher whiff rate. And the velos up to 100. So this is what the this is what the Gators are running out. That's it. That's why they're the nation's number two seed. Go oh, two again. Foul back by O'Donnell. Yeah, I was talking with Jack Caglione about Waldrop's splitter. He said it's a splitter from the depths of you know where. <laughs> oh two from Sproke. And it's a breaking ball and he's got six K's and oh, fanned wow. for the last five. Back to the curveball right here. Curveball slide. That's curveball. Velo down a little bit, so it'd been change up heavy. This time goes back to a breaking ball, and Ethan O'Donnell just can't get a piece of it. He's now punched out four of the last five that he's faced. Now to the big tandem of Geloff and Teal, and Jake Geloff first pitch swinging to Colby Halter. And two outs quickly for Brandon Sproat in this sixth. 
I mean, you can't blame some of these hitters for going up there trying to get off early, right? We saw Caglione make a first pitch out, Curlin, now Geloff, like maybe Parker not as much, but especially against Sproat, it, you really don't want to get to two strikes. So you want to go up there and be aggressive early, but then he runs a sinker in on your hands and it's an easy 5-3. Now Kyle Teal. Yes, he did. Virginia has only been held scoreless through six innings two times all season. The last time was more than three months ago in March against North Carolina. We told you this is an offense eighth in the country in runs per game first in average first in doubles as Berkey said and they don't strike out very much. They strike out the least of the eight teams we've got here in Omaha. Well, they average nine runs a game. Florida averages eight runs a game. And currently we're sitting at a one nothing just to let you know how <laughs> special both these hurlers have been. Teal sprays it left side yeah. foul. Kyle Teal with 236 hits in his career. First team All American earlier this week. Change up down at 90. One ball, two strikes. Sprouts one, two. Sales. See that, that velo 94, right? The changeup was just 90. Yeah. So pitch count starting to climb a little bit. The velo backing up just a touch. Effectiveness just the same though. Foul. Teal fouls a changeup himself. That's one thing about watching Mr. Skeens tomorrow night. The velo doesn't really back down. Doesn't drop off. The LSU ace ready for prime time tomorrow night. Teal. Teal strikes out. What pitch? You guessed it. Another changeup from Brandon Sprode with a K strut as well. The other four teams here in action tomorrow. Stanford, Wake Forest, Tennessee, LSU. You can watch both games right here on ESPN, including this guy. How many Ben have? 202. Mm -hmm. We're 14 away from tying the SEC record and the LSU record for strikeouts in a season. The one that it looked like was untouchable. He's been that good all year for the Tigers. Josh Rivera in the air center field to begin the bottom of the six that Ethan O'Donnell went away. Seven gets him to second all time to pass David Price, which okay. is, that's, you might remember him. Decent company among those two gents. Is Skeens going to go first overall? You know, I mean, if you want a right handed pitcher, then yes. <laughs> Just a right-handed pitcher. <laughs> you think David Price has ever cut himself running on a stationary sign that was just sitting there? But he has. <laughs> Big Ben, we love you. Here's BT Rapo. He's had a good day against his old freshman year Coastal Carolina roommate. A walk and a double to left center back in the fourth. Both times to lead off innings. Rypel in the air toward left center. And O'Donnell coasts over, and there's two outs. Six in a row set down by Nick Parker. It's going to be fascinating to see what the Pirates do. I mean, you've got incredible choices. This, this draft is so rich with talent, but what do you value more? The opportunity at, at maybe a everyday position player that you think could be an all-star in, in Dylan Cruz or Wyatt Langford, or what, what a lot of us think is like an already made ace? Not, there's not a lot of projection that needs to take place with with Paul Skeens. He, he appears to be ready to take on that yes. role like tomorrow. This is Luke Heyman. Oh, what? Like how close? Like could he pitch in the major leagues right now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah absolutely. At what spot in the rotation? Depends on which team. But, yeah. Yeah. but I mean, I mean, just if you grade out the stuff, to me, the stuff is as good as all of the best pitchers that we've seen in the college game. Like he, you could argue he has all of their pitches. When you look at the whiff rates, it's better than Lighter's heater. It's right there with Kumar Rocker's slider. 
the, the changeup acts in a similar way to Casey Mize's split. Like, he, he feels like he's the best of all of them. Oh! Is that good? Yeah. That plays. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if you wanted to, I think you could send him straight there. Wow. 3 0 to Heyman. It is a strike for the fastball from Nick Parker. He is a well put together human being. Mm -hmm. yeah. He came up the other day. Can you imagine that dude sitting in a cockpit of a fighter jet? <laughs> I wouldn't want to be sitting co pilot. I guess you're sitting behind me. Yeah, that right bottom. Well, and, but that is part of his story, right? That he has the discipline and the work ethic. To, to be at Air Force for two years, right? This is, it's not just a really talented pitcher. There's a lot more that goes in to Paul Skeens than just the stuff, which is immense. All that makes it a, a an opportunity that just feels really hard to pass up if you're the Pirates. Go. Big time arms all over the place here in Omaha the next week and a half. 3 2. Hammond stays alive. Brent Louder is the Wake Forest ace. He's been incredible all season for the best team in the country. And he too will be a first round pick. We'll get three of the top 10 picks in the draft as as pitchers here as well yeah. with Chase Dol Dolander of Tennessee as well. We said the field was loaded. We weren't kidding. Seventh pitch to Heyman. On the ground, hard to third, and Jake Geloff swallows it up. One, two, three, and back-to-back -back innings for Nick Parker, keeping this a one-run game through six. Welcome back to Omaha. Gators up one, top of the seventh. And for Ellie O'Connor, Brian O'Connor's daughter, she's a little torn today. Obviously, has grown up around the Virginia baseball program, but she also works for the Florida Athletic Department as an assistant to athletic director Scott Strickland. So today she has on the Cavs uni, but underneath that white tank top has a Gator logo on it. She's also wearing a Gator bracelet. Not sure if dad knows, because when I talked to Coach O'Connor yesterday, I said, what's she going to wear? And he said, orange and blue well yeah both teams are orange and blue coach what kind of blue and he looks down his shirt and he goes navy <laughs> not sure if he knows about the logo on the shirt uh, she's kind of hiding it a little bit right now there it is he's, he's gonna know here in about an hour yep that's pretty cool that's a good man though I, I got to know him on a recruiting trip when I took a recruiting trip to Creighton a long time ago Assistant in Notre Dame to Paul Maneri and then got to job at Virginia has turned this program really into what it is. It, 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 it was some baseball history, but not here in Omaha before he got there. And it is it has been quite a 20 year run. One two to Ethan Anderson sales from Brandon Sprout in a one nothing game in the seventh. Three regional trips for the Hoos before the arrival 20 years ago of Brian O'Connor. No, That's down no swing full count. On Ethan Anderson, who had the backside double his last time in the fourth. This guy has been huge behind Geloff and Teal. And he walks to begin the seventh. Lead off man on for Virginia, scoreless so far. And Casey Sauke squares and takes 96 on the edge for strike one. Kate Fisher on the left, the lefty, and the closer, Brandon Neely, who can go more than one inning for Florida on the right. Sauke 0 for 2, a strikeout and a ground out to third. He squares again. And that's called a strike. Sauke doesn't like it. It's nothing at two. Sauke does not have a sack run all year. Virginia does it a fair amount. They've got 27 as a team, but Sauke hadn't done it. Now, showed both times he's worked himself into an 0 2 hole. Sprout's 97th pitch of the night is down with a changeup. Brandon Sprout leading this staff as he's done all season since coming back for a fourth year in Gainesville. One, two. Sankey nubs it foul.
Berkey said earlier, Casey Sauke's been hot. Brian O'Connor said to us this morning, he's come on of late. Mid-season, he was scuffling. At one point, he had a three for 47. Ooh. Brian O'Connor said to us, there's been a lot of big hits, too, these last three weeks. Three for 47 will make you question how much you love this game. I promise you that. But he's emerged out of it. Ten hits in the tourney. Stays alive. Big spots the last three innings. That's exactly where Sprode has gone. He has just leaned on that changeup. Right handers, left handers. Sauke's felt fouled two off in a row. Both of them are pretty good pitches. Pitch number 100. Sauke rolls it right side, base hit. Anderson goes first to third. Shellnut's throw is cut. And the Cavaliers have him at the corners with nobody out here in the seventh. It is amazing how when hitters sometimes don't get down the bunt, they can go to a hyper focus. What an at bat by Casey Sauke. You can see him stay inside a ball that he is really letting get deep because he doesn't want to swing and miss a ball changeup. And I tell you, when Anderson first went first to third, I thought, oh, no, not again. But he gets in there, and the who's got something cooking here in the seventh. So Anderson indeed at third and Sauke aboard. After he battled with Brandon Sproat and got Virginia's first two strike hit of the ball game off Sproat. And now Anthony Stefan who's been scorching. First pitch swinging. Halter bubbles. And this game is tied. Halter throws out Stefan and it's a 1-1 game. And Ellie is cheering for her father's team. Well, and this looked like Halter second-guessed himself. His energy's taking him towards a 5-4-3. But he peaks at home right before he finishes the catch. And in a 1-0 game, you probably, you're probably you the home team. You probably trade the run for a double play, but Halter ends up with neither. Now, fortunately, they did get an out, but, man, a missed opportunity right there for Colby Halter to do one or the other. And the Virginia fans get into it. Oh, wow. With this game tied in the seventh, and now the eight hole hitter, the second baseman, Henry Godbout, 0 for 2 with a pop to short and a strikeout on uh, a change up his last time against Brandon Spro. One 0 pitch. Breaking ball at the top of the zone to call the strike. Season high in pitches for Brandon Spro, 108. Two and a half months ago against Tennessee. Career high is 114 last year in the postseason against Central Michigan. Change up down. Got about the freshman from Brooklyn facing Spro. Ah, a 2-1. Line foul. For Sprode over the course of the year, I mean, it, it, third time through the order, the slug is, is similar to what it is first and second time through the order. Now, the velocity goes down a little bit, but the slug goes down. That being said, it feels like he got got out in the eight hole, did a wick in the nine hole. He's not going to face anyone after that. Mm -hmm. I, I would think if you're Kevin O'Sullivan right now, you're saying, all right, let's see if he can get the last two guys in this order and get out. 2-2. Two, two. Good block by BT Ryapel. And now it's a full count. I think it might be Fisher. If Godbout gets on, yes. It's Fisher next. I, I think you have to go to the point. Man at second, the payoff. Godbout pops it up, foul and out of play. Kevin O'Sullivan pondering those same thoughts. Here in the seventh on day one at the College World Series. 3-2 again. Oh, right here. Off himself. Look out. Ellie O'Connor with Virginia on her face. Gators 
on her chest. And the Cavaliers jersey draped around her. Three two. Lined in the center field, a base hit for the freshman. It's a stop sign for Casey Salke. And Henry Godbout comes through. And Virginia's got him at the corners again. Uh, Brandon Sprote. Boy, Salke just froze a little bit, KP. Wasn't quite sure this ball was getting down. He freezes, and that's just enough to make sure Kevin McMullen puts the brakes on him at third base. An opportunity to score right there. It could have been. I, I think where Langford was playing at center field, how hard that ball was hit him. I don't know if you send him anyway, but you're right. I mean, on, on the freeze, there's no chance you can. And that'll do it for Brandon Sproat. He was outstanding out there today, but he'll leave runners on the corners one out as the Gators go to the bullpen. But the talented freshman left hander, Cade Fisher, for a lefty in the ninth spot. We'll see if Virginia counters with a pinch hitter and a 1 1 game in the seventh when we come back. Brandon Sprout came back and he's tonight's Capital One rewarding performance pitched excellent tonight. I agree. He was phenomenal. I mean we talked about velocity early it was up to 101 but really as the game went on the story story was more to change up. Struck out three in the fifth two in the sixth all were on that change up and then ran into a little trouble here in the seventh lead off walk the single to Salki and the single to Godbout that will chase him responsible for both guys on base right now. Seven punch outs walk just three. And at least as of now, leaves this ball game tied. And gives it off to the freshman lefty, Cade Fisher, who in the NCAA tournament has gone nine innings of one run ball. He's got a 3 0 2. Kevin O'Sullivan told us earlier this year he is a future superstar in the SEC. Well, he certainly pitched like it in the postseason. Just a low heartbeat, hey. high belief young left-hander that shows you all the makings of a guy that's going to be a star for this program. They have handed him the ball in some huge spots here down the stretch. None bigger than this one right here. Facing the left-hand hitting freshman Harrison Dinowick, who offered and came up empty on a bunt bid with first and third. Now we wondered if maybe pinch hitter. Brian O'Connor sometimes does this with Colin Toft, who's also started right-hand batter. In left field, but Kate Fisher's been split proof at his freshman season. Dedewick squares, gets it down, but foul on a safety bid, and it's nothing at two. Caglion was in a spot right there that he could have defended the safety. If that goes down to third baseline, it is fair. Halter kind of stayed back. He didn't go anywhere. Maybe he was reading the barrel, but. Caglion charged, and, and he would have had a really good chance to throw Salki out of home play. I think Kevin Mullen's going to keep it on with two strikes, but obviously there's a discussion here. What's the breaks and where everybody started? Remember, Keg Leon was holding the base runner on. Walter was fairly close to the bag over at third, but their breaks towards home plate were very different. Then we're kidding, just 130 first lefties this year, so it, it, it wouldn't shock me if if he decides to keep this on. He's probably going to have to bunt a slider, because that's what. Over the course of this season, Fisher's been so good at left on left. Instead, grounds it to third. Halter to the plate. The tag. Got him. Colby Halter up to the task on this one, and they get Casey Salki at the dish. Boy, and he kind of bobbled it too, KP. It wasn't the cleanest of transfers, but it looked like. Ryapel did a nice job with Salki. You see, they're just a touch of a bobble, but a fantastic job there of making an accurate throw. And Salki can't get that left hand there. Watch, watch the bobble here on the transfer. He is bobbling that ball as he's going to throw it. Incredible job of still making an accurate throw. Watch the second hop of this ball. There's a reason why he bobbled it. One, it's a cue ball. Two, see that? Mm -hmm. It just shot immediately glove side. That, that's that's pretty good work just to glove it, have a chance to throw him out. That's a big out. And trying to find the grip wow. after that. Yeah. Wow, that, that ball had so much side spin on it when he picked it up that it rolled up his wrist and he still fired a strike. So two outs, two on. This is Griffo Farrell out of the leadoff spot, one for three. And it's a ball and a strike from Cade Fisher. How about some of the defensive plays we've seen in this game? Casey Sauke with the hose from right. And then Colby Halter standing tall over at third. 
One one. Lease to third past the dive of Halter. Godbath scores. Titterwick races to third. They wave him in safely. And it's a two run double from Griff O'Farrell. And the Hoos lead in the seventh. talked about O'Farrell and just how solid he's been all year. All ACC shortstop. I mean, this is going to score a run, no doubt about it. But it's a part down the left field line and right field line. We're not quite sure. And you can see the route right there is Sheikoffer's a little bit unsure as to whether it's going to hit that front wall or whether it's going to go all the way down. One's going to score anyway. But it may have factored into the second. Now three in the seventh inning after getting shut out the first sixth and the Hoos have their first lead. We told you only the third time all season that Virginia had been shut out through six. The Hoos get to Sprout and Fisher in the seventh and lead this by two. And it's another double. The, the Virginia offense again doubles travel. They have added to that program and nation leading total that they've had. Came here with 161 of them. School record. And Griffo Farrell, the latest to add on. And a double digit lead on the rest of the pack. I mean, it's. They've hit the most by a wide margin. 0 2 to Ethan O'Donnell. And he locks one into center field. The base hit. They send O'Farrell. And he scores to make it a three run lead. Kevin O'Sullivan takes the baseball from the talented freshman Cade Fisher as Virginia has hung four on uh, Florida here in the seventh and doing damage with two outs. Next up, Brandon Neely, the All American closer, is summoned for Florida after damage from the Cavaliers. In this top of the seventh, Virginia has sent seven to the plate and put up four runs. Sprout's out, now Fisher is out, and so the Gators turn to Brandon Neely, a second team All American with 13 saves this season. This is where you have the advantage of knowing you get a day off. I mean, you, even if you're down in this situation, Neely's been one of their best, and, and you're going to do everything you can to keep it close. 64 punch outs in 46 and two thirds, because regardless of what happens, you got tomorrow off. And so from a bullpen standpoint, everybody should be able to come back. But Neely, who there was discussions middle of the way through the season whether or not he should potentially be in a starting role. The left-hander Fisher, that's an outcome he just didn't see a whole lot this year. Kevin O'Sullivan told us this morning he wouldn't hesitate to go to Cade Fisher because he saw the numbers on a Virginia lineup that had struggled against left-hand pitching compared to righties, but First it was Fisher and now it's Neely and four runs across for the Cavaliers oh. and one of their best bats climbing in in Jake Geloff to face Brandon Neely and the matchup here is power versus power. If you look at Brandon Neely the, the pitch that is he's most effective with is the fastball 28 percent whiff rate on the heater normal is about 18 so it's a plus fastball plays up in the zone. The boy Geloff loves the heater. Got one to start out at 94. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an oppo base hit to right hack right there for Mr. Geloff. Let it eat, young man. Brian O'Connor told us earlier this year that the aggressiveness that Jay Geloff has at the plate with his swings, he can't think of another player he's had at Virginia quite like it. Stop. Ball at a strike, uh, Geloff. And what I love about this coaching staff is they haven't coached it out of him. They've noticed it from day one. KP, you tried to get them to coach him out of it. They still wouldn't. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> no. I just asked what they've done with him. And Kevin McMullen said, well, it, it 
it may look a little unorthodox sometimes. And yeah, I understand it's it's high intensity, but and it hits the barrel a lot. Yeah, and you, We're not you gonna noticed, say a whole lot. You noticed it his freshman year, yeah. and it's it hasn't changed much. But and he just continues to do damage. With two outs and O'Donnell aboard, oh. one and two on Geloff. And Brian O'Connor is quick to say he doesn't call it reckless from Geloff because it, he knows what he's doing. It's calculated, and Brian O'Connor says Jake Geloff is as prepared as anyone when he goes up to the plate. He's a mature hitter. His plan just happens to be some mighty hacks. Staring down a one-two from Neely. Bends outside. outside. Forty eight home runs in Jake Geloff's career the most ever by Virginia Cavalier. He's got the single season record as well as we told you earlier with the twenty three he's got this season at twenty one last year. After he burst onto the scene a couple of years ago down the stretch in the run that year to Omaha runner goes and it's line foul. Donald had that base standing up. He yeah. had a huge jump on Neely. Neely's not exactly quick to the play. <laughs> no. I mean, it is a high leg kick, and he's first and foremost worried about Geloff. Well, Donald, over the course of the year, 18 of 21 in stolen bases. Virginia's been really efficient on the base pass, too. As a club coming in, 81 of 99. He goes. Oh, it's a ball. Ryan Pell's throw. Oh, no, 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 no. Got it. BT Rappel delivers a dart to get Ethan O'Donnell to end the inning. Virginia might want another look at this. They've got the splash going in their dugout. Well, you get two challenges in college baseball. You keep it if you're successful. Brian O'Connor and Virginia did challenge the call of out at second. It misses him the first time, but watch the wrist. It lands on the back heel of O'Donnell, and I think that's out of the gonna, there. I think he's out. I think the call will stand. I agree. So it gives you a chance to talk now because we went to break, and now they're still reviewing it. And they came back. And okay. So what now, like, what I, I know like it's, it, the floor is yours, <laughs> oh, Senior Burke. Okay. Okay. Where are we going next? Well, Nick uh, Parker's been really good. Okay. You want to know how many strikeouts Nick Parker has tonight? Without looking at your book. One. Yeah. You know what it was? First inning? First hitter of the yeah, game. Yeah, curling. Oh, yeah. That's it. One strikeout. He's had a ton of fly ball outs, and, and, and most of the time in the college game right now, if you have a lot of fly ball outs, usually aren't going to work yeah. out very well because there's a lot of home runs. Now, ballpark effect is helping some. Uh, this place playing a little bit bigger than it normally does. And we've seen this place give up home runs. I mean, it, it, it will now, but. He just he's done it in an unconventional way but he's done it in an unconventional way his whole career. Yeah it's not go out and just blow it by a bunch of swing and miss. It's just missing barrels and he's missed barrels the whole night. Yeah I think it's really neat to watch somebody with this arsenal yeah. pitch on this stage against this offense because I don't think we've seen over 91 from him in the ball game. I haven't seen that. Yeah and Maybe, but the ability to manipulate the ball work to both sides of the count change speeds like pitching. It's it still plays for all the star power that we've got here and we were talking about Paul Skeens earlier and Brandon Sprout had 101 and well Nick Parker's been that good and now he's got a lead as well as we get the ruling here and we'll see how smart you guys really are. The call in the field is confirmed. The runner is out. Virginia is charged one challenge. Turns out pretty <laughs> smart. Hold on. Hold on. Like fan etiquette you can't boo a replay <laughs> like you can boo a call that's what you can't boo a replay this went and looked at it there's a whole reason they did it everybody starts booing after that uh, well, they such, looked at it yeah and it's such a great example of human nature like you're gonna see what you want to see yes. like Virginia <laughs> fans were certain he was still safe so were the, so were the kids in the dugout <laughs> So it's an out. It ends that half inning. While we got a moment, let's check out our biggie moment brought to you by Wendy's. A couple hanging off speed pitches from Cade Fisher. How about the hanging changeup that cuts right into the barrel of Griffo Farrell and then the hanging slider? 
that Ethan O'Donnell laces back up the middle. You cannot make mistakes to this talented Virginia offense. Kate Fisher made two. Virginia made him pay, and that is the difference in the ball game right now. And so, after the four runs in that top of the seventh, Nick Parker's done. And now it's Evan Blanco, a reliable left-hander who comes on out of the bullpen for, again, pitching staff in the Cavaliers, fourth best in the country in ERA. Yeah, they throw a ton of strikes, too. And it's just a, it's a very complete pitching staff. Yeah, maybe not a pitching staff that's going to come out and light the gun up like some others are here. But what they're going to do is... Come out and do that. Not walk too many guys. He's nine and twenty-three and a third this year for the left-hander for Blanco. It's a fastball just above ninety. It's primarily fastball break about the left-handers. You see some change-ups to right-handers, but very fastball heavy to both. And how about Nick Parker, like a guy who's made now fifty-six career collegiate starts on this stage? It's a guy who earlier this season, back in March, took a comebacker off the right side of his face at a hundred and three miles an hour. And had surgery. There were no broken bones, but he said to us yesterday his cheekbone was indented. So it was like fixing a dent in a car. They had to undo it, and they did. And four days later, he threw a bullpen. Stepped back into the rotation. He's been there since, and he has been nails this season at the front of this Virginia staff. Yeah, I'm sure there was a couple nights in that hospital where he wasn't sure he was going to take the mound again, much less dominate in the College World Series opener for his club, but what a, what a special moment for the veteran right-hander. And now Blanco, and Tyler Shelnut goes first pitch swinging at Ethan O'Donnell. So one out, bottom of the seventh. Florida now finds itself down three runs. So a Florida team that's pitching has been outstanding here in the NCAA tournament. But in terms of the runs per game, of the eight teams here, they're seventh of the eight in runs per game. We get a pinch hitter here, and it's Dale Thomas comes on to bat in the spot of Colby Halter, who had an RBI single and a walk. And now the lefty replaced by the right hand hitting Thomas. Oh, one. Thomas, a fourth-year junior, like Parker and Ryan Pell, a Coastal Carolina transfer. He's had some nice moments off the bench here in the postseason. All right. Ball and a strike from Blanco. The 1-1. One -one. Oh. That's down, 2-1 uh, Thomas. Three balls and a strike. This Virginia team's incredible. They got six position players in their lineup that are either freshmen or sophomore. First dude out of the pin here in Blanco, a freshman. And here they are a few outs away from being 1 0 in the College World Series. Five pitch walk, and Dale Thomas is on with one away here in the last of the seventh. We'll get a pinch hitter as well in the ninth spot instead of Richie Sheikoffer. It's the talented sophomore from Auburndale, Florida, Ty Evans. Started a lot this year for the Gators. Yeah, Evans was the guy early. They, they gave Evans a lot of chances to win that right field job, and it just it never quite got going, even though they think very highly of his ability to, to do damage and, and be a guy for them moving forward. Big opportunity he has here and a, and a nice matchup here for Kevin O'Sullivan to be able to go to the talented right handed hitter. Let's see if Virginia makes a move back. Little cat and mouse. Yeah. Some managing going on by the two skippers. That's Jack O'Connor. No relation to the head coach of the Hoos. He's got some premium stuff 
in his first year on the grounds in Charlottesville. And Brian O'Connor is going to the bullpen for Jack O'Connor. In the seventh with one out. Virginia up on Florida by three. 31 home runs for Jack Caglione. That leads the country. It's a single season Florida program record. He's a Golden Spikes Award finalist. And he bats in a massive spot in this game with his Gators down by two. In this bottom of the seventh. And the two way sensation is ready with two aboard. He has seen a couple of times in this postseason already. Late in the game, an opponent go to a left on left matchup. And twice he's gone first pitch home run already as Virginia goes to a southpaw in Jake Barrett. Well, and so you would think that he's probably going to see a first pitch slider here from Barrett. And I got to try to pump a fastball by him. Fastball's going to live right around night. He could go a little bit more than that. Sliders is, is really his only secondary pitch to lefties. He will throw more changeups to righties, but left on left, he just primarily fastball slider, gets a lot more swing and miss on that slider. 58 strikeouts and just shy of 50 innings this year. It's still really good numbers for Caglione left on left. He's been better against righties. And Brian O'Connor wants to use every bit of those splits and what the data says. Here in this high leverage spot in the seventh. Evans at third, Langford at first. Two outs, home half of the seventh in Omaha on day one at the College World Series. First pitch is a slider, and it's ball one. Caglion. Over 300, 318 with nine homers versus lefties this year. So he, he has been very productive facing lefties. Barry's 1 0. This ball misses to the glove side and it's 2 0. Fourth outing of the NCAA tournament for Jake Barry. You see Josh Rivera. In the cleanup spot on deck for Florida. Two zero. Outside. Misses outside. Three and zero. Great taking. Great call. That's a pitch you, you really want if you're Jake Barry, but that's definitely off the edge. You need this sort of care pitching to Caglione. Three zero. He takes a strike. He won't be taking here. No. At least not that pitch. With runners at the corners and two outs, the 3 1. Out. He's outside and they're loaded. So Caglione works the walk and the bases are drunk for Josh Rivera. Nick Parker was excellent tonight and now like it was for Brandon Sprout in the top half of this seventh he is forced to watch the Cavalier bullpen here in the home half of this seventh inning. Not going to the right hander here they got wonderful. Down there, it looks to be ready to go in the bullpen. Yeah, he's the hard throwing right hander. First pitch to Rivera, and he fouls it back on 91. Evans had the double that he smoked at 108 off the bat. Langford reached on what was ruled an error on O'Farrell, and then Jack Caglione walked with two outs here in the seventh. Three fly ball outs for Josh Rivera tonight. Ball and a strike. And the changeup's actually a little bit better, probably for for Barry than the breaking ball. Maybe that's why they're against righties. Yeah, yeah. against righties it has been. I mean, the swing and miss on the changeup this year against right-handers just shy of 50 percent. Is one-one. Rivera foul 
Dials it back, and it's one and two. Missed opportunity right there, a fastball right down Broadway, maybe just a touch up, and got to believe he's going to have to deal with that change up from Barry here in a one-two count. Florida's got nine grand slams this season to lead the SEC. Rivera's got one of them. But in a one-two hole, Barry deals. Rivera fouls it away, got a fastball. talked earlier about how Josh Rivera has been more mentally free and emotionally this season. It has led to a monster year for the fourth year junior in a crucial spot now here in the seventh. Barry's one two again. Bouncing ball Barry gloves and retires Rivera to leave him loaded. Peyton Manning's Tennessee Volunteers don't play until tomorrow, but with the Vols back in Omaha like they were a couple of years ago, look who is in Omaha. Yeah, he got his youngster there next to him. A big, big uh, Tony Vitello fan, Peyton Manning. So I think he's coming here to cheer on his his Vols and his buddy. He's doing advanced scouting. Yeah, there you go. That's what he's doing. <laughs> He'd probably be decent never at that. Doing that. <laughs> He'd probably be decent at that. Sizing it up on day one here at the Men's College World Series to the eighth inning. Virginia four, Florida two. Jake Geloff, Kyle Teal, and Ethan Anderson against Brandon Neely. Do you ever think a football player would be so attached to the name Omaha? Pretty wild. He is a production company. You know, I'm, I'm aware. <laughs> yeah. Geloff in the air toward the right center. <laughs> yeah, that's Ty Evans now and right for the first half when he was a quarterback Chris when he audibled sometimes he that would was, yell that's, not, that's actually yell not true when that's, he was faking it audible. No, no okay either one of those are right. okay smarty Jones <laughs> what was it we yelled Omaha a lot when he was a, Jones. when he was a quarterback it meant that on the next sound the ball was going to be snapped Did he tell you they still yelled it. yeah it just wasn't an audible mm -hmm. but you sounded smart it was an audible, it was an audible to the snap count that's what it was <laughs> okay fair enough Cal deal rolls one at Josh Rivera Two quick ones for Neely. Seems like a guy who has uh, sunk his teeth, you Berkey, into everything Peyton Manning to, uh, to know uh, that for sure. You could say I'm a fan. That would be accurate. He's watching a good one here tonight at uh, Charles Schwab Fields in Omaha, Nebraska. Chris Burke, Kyle Peterson, Mike Monaco upstairs, Chris Budden down on the field, our entire crew in the truck. Ethan Anderson in the five spot has doubled and walked. All right, then. Ball Good one on a fastball okay. in. There's a lot of depth to this Virginia lot of up and down. Saw guys like Sauke and God about to liver in the seventh. All right. That's a strike. A lot of depth and a bunch of sophomores that Earned their stripes last year and they've really come into their own this season. And of course, the, the two star juniors in the middle there. Oh, Good six of the nine in this offensive Both lineup. Are going to be back next year. That, that is a massive rarity in college baseball right now. I mean, most, most lineups are, are significantly over. They don't have a senior inside. In this it's three juniors. And, and just the one transfer portal in Ethan O'Donnell. Yeah. In the offensive line. Yeah. yeah. A lot of transfers on the pitching staff. Meanwhile, they call themselves the U Crew. It's where they live on campus, and uh, that has served them quite well this season. Three-two on the way. There's chop foul, a jam job at 95. Payoff. Anderson strikes out. Elevated gas at 95 in the eighth for Brandon Neely. In the 
last 41 College World Series, only four teams that have lost their first game have gone on to win the national title. So that's what's at stake as we go to the bottom of the eighth with Virginia up two on Florida. When Brian O'Connor's won his last four in a row. Sully, Sully hit his only three and four in first round games, but the three times he's he's won it, they've stayed around a while. So both of these clubs would speak to that stat. Outside. We told you two of the last seven national champs here on the first night at the Men's College World Series. Florida down a pair, bottom eight, five, six, seven, starting with BT Rappel. Rappel goes the opposite way to left center field, back to the wall, and that ball is gone. It's a one-run ball game, and who else but BT Rappel? The one earlier was the double to the backside. This one has enough juice to stay in the air and carry out of here. The extension through the back of that ball, that left arm staying long through the back of the baseball, and he rides it off the rail over the left center field wall. Big hit BT with another big one. The BT stands for big time. Four home runs his last four games. He's been hot when there's hits. He said it earlier, Berkey, they seem to be homers for BT Ryan Pell. He likes the extra base runs. Yeah, and guys, he's doing it at a time where he knows that this is the last time he'll ever play baseball. He's already decided he's not going to go and try and make it in the minors. And after this, he's going to move to Tampa and go work at a financial firm. And he said, I've gotten emotional thinking about this is the last time I'm going to play baseball. I get that emotion from my dad. And you were talking to him yesterday. He's like, I'm just trying to soak it up and make this thing last as long as I can. He almost did it last year. He thought about not coming back. And a long talk with Kevin O'Sullivan and Luke Hammond grounds it to Henry Gatbound for the first out. And Sully said, listen, man, you got a home here. I'd love to have you come back. And I understand if you want to go start your life, but by the way, I think you're a really good player. You can help us. So if you want to come back, we'd love to have you back. And obviously it's if this is the last run, however long it goes, it's a run that BT Rypel's not going to forget. They told us he's at complete peace with the decision. He's going to start on July 31st. He said he's looking forward to a life where he's going to have some more time on his hands. It'll be a good paying and fun job, I'm sure, but uh, it's not squatting down behind the plate for it feels like every single game for now five years in college. One out in the eighth, Tyler Shelnut. Takes the ball. Well, he's playing like somebody he, that doesn't want the season to end. Yeah. I mean, the, the amount of homers that were right on time that he's hit here down the stretch is legendary here in this game of program. There's that good change up again to a righty from the lefty Jake Perry. You saw two of them in the elimination game against Texas Tech. There was a walk off in Hoover. There was a homer that tied it up against South Carolina in the Super. Back to the change for Perry. He strikes out Shelnut and there's two gone. Just the second strike out of the game for Florida. Berlin struck out to start it. Now back to back outs after the home run. Hard run ball to second base and a punch out right there of Shelma. Again, pitching staffs constructed differently for Virginia from many of the other teams here. This is Dale Thomas. For Dickinson, the Virginia pitching coach said to us this morning, yeah, we might have. KP, like you said earlier, the softest throwing staff of the eight teams here. They were fourth in the country in the ERA. <laughs> Outside! Change up for a ball one and one on Thomas, who's been a maven as a pinch hitter. And the home run by Ryapel ensures that Curland and Lankford at least will hit in the ninth. Right? So the, That's what the, not only does it get them within one, but then it, it brings up two of your biggest home run threats and Caglione will be lurking. So now just one swing away from tying this up for the Gators. Makes for high drama here the last 
few outs. Tagliano had the walk in the seventh. Two and two on Thomas. He walked when he pinch hit in that seventh as well. But Florida just got the one and left him loaded. DT Rappel has made it a one run game. The 2 2. Thomas stays alive. Good. We've seen a lot of good change ups in this ball game from a number of pitchers. Not everybody. Yeah. It seems that. Like. Two two. Oh. Thomas takes down. Great take right there. And that's exactly what Barry was trying to do with that changeup. Ty Evans had the double the opposite way into the right field corner last time. Thomas to center. Odato ends the inning. BT Ryapel makes it. A one run ball game. People, they are riding high. No, the, oh, but we're going to see a lot of best on best. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to see a lot of best on best tomorrow. You got Red Louder going against a Stanford lineup that is loaded with power. And you got best on best and Paul Skeens, who has I'm been the best die. in the country this year on the mound, against a Tennessee team that everybody thought would be here last year, but yet this year has stormed through the postseason. That's preseason number one against preseason number two. With the actual number one plan before him. Yeah, I mean, think about that. So you got LSU, who's number one for two thirds of the season. You got Wake, who's number one for the back one third of the season. And you got Tennessee, who was number two to start it. And Stanford's been top ten all the way through. D1 baseball, who I hear is pretty reputable. Hmm. LSU was one, Tennessee was two, Stanford was three, Wake was six to start the year, and they're all in one bracket at the CWS. Hurt. So nice job, Kendall and the boys. They nailed that. Shout out to Fitzy. Fitzy. Amen. Broom dog. Fitty barrels. <laughs> Fitty set. Three and two to uh, Casey Sauke. And Brandon nearly wanted it. Instead, it's a leadoff walk with Virginia up a run, top nine, looking for insurance. Brandon Neely will give you some emotion and he wanted that toward the edge instead now he's got to face Anthony Stefan with the leadoff man aboard here in the top of the ninth. Stefan squares and drops it down the third and Thomas throws him out sacrifice successful Salki to second with one away it was interesting it, it looked like Thomas was thinking about going to second base there but Rivera went to third so there was no play Stefan, nice job of just getting it down and Virginia trying to get an insurance run, which feels really big right here with the part of the lineup coming up for Florida. That'll be 9 1 and 2 on the way. This is 8 in the Virginia order. Henry Godbell singled and scored in that four run seventh inning for Virginia. They've been platooning this second base job for the Cavaliers. Trying different things. And then Brian O'Connor said to us this morning, Henry Godbout just settled in, started to be very consistent. Takes a riding fastball up and in. Good contact guy. And he's been steady. Two zero from Neely. Boy, that fastball gets a lot of swing and miss. That fastball plays. Come on. Talk about a fastball that stays on plane. That's what you're going to see from Neely. May not be the 97, 98, but it just stays right where it starts. And on the hands and jam toward right. That Evans. Two gone. Kevin O'Sullivan has talked about Brandon Neely and how selfless he's been this season and he's proud of him for that because this guy was a starter last year. You guys talked about earlier how the coaching staff they told us earlier today considered does he need to go back into the starting rotation 
this season. But he has stayed in the back end, and he's been a valuable arm. And he's trying to keep this deficit at one for the Gators. Right. Strike one to Harrison Didowick. I think there's a decent chance you see him in that role next year. Mm -hmm. Working out of the pen this year because of what they got. I mean, you go Sproat, Neely, and, or excuse me, Sproat, Waldrop, and Caglione. There's a reason to why he's been there, but the stuff plays yeah. as a starter. There's a good change up there, too. Yeah, fastball cutter change up. It's not your typical closer that's just coming in with two pitches. And the velo, you know, it, it's made a jump from last year to this. I'm sure it will continue to rise, but he, he has been a great piece for this bullpen. And it's second 0-2. All right, Pell blocks it. Hold on. I got you. Tense moments throughout this ball game. One two down again. <laughs> Top of the lineup would be next for Virginia. Two two pitch. Pulled to right and struck well by Didowick into the corner. Evans with a long way to go and he couldn't get it. Salki scores. Didowick motors to third with insurance and an RBI triple. How about some of these Cavalier freshmen? This ball stays in the air for a long time, but he just hit it in the right spot. Off the bat, he thought maybe this one has a chance to go. But Ty Evans, who did not start this game, had a long ways to go. Boy, well, almost did it too, KP. Yeah, I mean, right off the, the glove. Yeah, Slides right, right, off right at the edge. end. That's a great shot, by the way. And for the freshman, big swing right there. Two out, RBI triple to right, extends the lead out of two. Two outs, man at third. Griffo Farrell with a bouncing ball left side for Josh Rivera to end the inning. It's now 5-3. Florida down to its last three outs. Wyatt Langford will hit. Will we see the nation's leader in home runs as well? It's a double elimination format in bracket play at the Men's College World Series, and we told you what history says about how important it is to win the first one and how common it is for the champions to have started 2-0. So that is the scene as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Florida with three outs left to play with. Just a reminder coming up after our game is Professional Fighters League currently airing on ESPN+. Plus. We'll get you to them as soon as our game is finished. Jake Berry stays out there. 9-1-2 and, and strike one dropped in on the edge to Ty Evans. Jake Berry came on in the seventh, still out there in the ninth, and he yanks a fastball. Yeah, not only is he still out there, but Jay Wilford, the one of the main back end guys for Virginia, not even throwing right now. So it, this is Berry's game right now. Oh. Brian O'Connor said this week about Jay Wolfolk, who's got nine saves for him this year. He's also a quarterback for the Virginia football team that Wolfolk is close. He's been working on some things. It's not a physical thing. And he's got to have success for Virginia to be successful here in Omaha. But mm -hmm. right now, they really trust Jake Berry. Wolfolk's got nine saves, right? He's been their guy. But, but Berry has six, and he's looked very good to this point. So it, it makes a ton of sense. 2 1. Evans pulls it on a line to left, and God! One run game again. Just go ahead, go ahead and have yourself a day, Ty Evans. 112 miles an hour. We saw him hit a fastball up down the right field line. Now, how about take a high heater? and smush it in the left field seats. Ty Evans brings the Gators with, within a swing, and now how big is the run in the top half by the Cavaliers? And you also ensure that Jack Caglione will bat in this setting. 
And now Jay Wolfel up and throwing again for the Hoos. Oh, and one on Cade Curlin. Had an RBI ground out to third his last inside. time. And takes inside. See the triple down the right field line by the freshman let it in. Paid some dividends so far. And think about how close Ty Evans was yeah. to catching that. And then he just melts a baseball to left. Melt is a lot better than smush. One, two. Hard three. Change up for strike three calls. Barry just plants one. What a way. Go back to the eighth inning. Gives up the leadoff home run. Goes bang, bang, bang. Gets the next three guys out. Now in the ninth. Gives up the leadoff home run. And now the most important is the next guy you're, you're going to face. And Cade Curlin's had a really good year, but took a changeup that was too close right there. Second strikeout for Barry since coming in. Now you get this guy. Wyatt Langford, the projected top three draft pick. Oh, what? Takes up high, ball one. Langford has walked, popped to second, has a fly out to center, and reached on an error on a ground ball to short. And Jack Caglione looms behind him. This is Hammer. Left field, and we are tied. <laughs> It was just a matter of time, boys. You can't keep a good man down too long. A hanging changeup and launched onto the concourse at left field. And you do not see this much from Wyatt Langford, but the show of emotion let it all loose, Mr. Langford. As expressive as you will ever yeah. find, Wyatt Langford. Look where that ball landed. Now, Kevin O'Sullivan talked about him today. So when some guys maybe get here and they're looking for the camera, Langford isn't one of those guys. Well, camera's going to find him a whole lot after that. <laughs> and now Jack Caglione, who's got, again, 31 of them this season. For just joining us, the country's leader at home runs. Swings through the off speed to start out. Caglione 0 for 3. He walked against Barry as he stayed very disciplined right when Barry came on for the left on left in the seventh. Ball at a strike. We have had some drama on day one at the Mets College World Series. Barry deals. Caglione hits it hard through the shift in the right center. And the winning run is on for Florida in the ninth. And look who it is. Josh Rivera, the leading hitter on this team with runners in scoring position. Runner at first base here. But just one out. And big hit BT on deck. Guys, that came off the bat at 117 from Jack Caglione. He's two running a middle single to right, <laughs> right there. The two homers were 112 each. Pitching coach Drew Dickinson emerges for a conversation with Jake Berry, who, again, he's in this closer role, a guy who pitched a lot as a starter last year. And Jay Wolfolk with the nine saves. Not trusted as much, clearly, as they do Jake Perry. And Jake Perry said this recently to Jeff White, who does a great job covering Virginia athletics. He said, I, this is not really something I ever expected to experience my whole life. Never really saw myself as a closer. And this year, it just kind of happened. It's been unbelievable. And now he's trying to buckle down and force extra innings here in the bottom of the night. Yeah, they're sticking with him. And how about this, too? We're going to get a defensive substitution. 
Colin Tuft takes over for Harrison Dedewick in left. Harrison Dedewick, who, oh, by the way, was described to us earlier today as a really good outfielder. So tucked in, Dedewick out. And Josh Rivera climbs in. Cleanup hitter for the Gators in a 5-5 game. Ball one to start out with a first pitch changeup. Couple flyouts to center, a line out to left, and a comebacker when Rivera saw Barry in the seventh that ended that inning with the bases loaded. The 1 0 is up. You challenge with a fastball here, KP, or you go to the changeup? Well, this is a dangerous count. It just kind of looks like Barry's running out of stuff right now. How much longer can you keep going with him? Feels like this is it. This is absolutely it. But if you take him out after this, you go right-hander against Ryan. But I, I just, your eyes would tell you right now that that Barry's about out of stuff. 3-0 pitch. Hey. Rivera takes a strike. Jay Wolfolk has only thrown 11 pitches in the NCAA tournament. Full count. Well, that's what coming unglued looks like right there. That that was everything Josh Rivera had on a fastball that just snuck above his barrel. Homer strikeout, Homer single. And with one out and a man at first, three balls and two strikes. BT Ryapel, will he face Barry or Wolfolk? Surprised? I, I am. I, I, I really am surprised. I know it's it's left on left, but Barry's actually better against righties, and obviously Ryapel took him deep just last inning. To left center to lead off the eight. Now in the ninth, oh he gets hit. They're loaded. Ryapel fires up his teammates, and still only one out for the Gators in the ninth. There's no chance he's moving too far out of the way of that no. one. I know he wants to win it with a bat, but they'll take their chances. Bases loaded, one out right here. Now Brian O'Connor comes out and makes the signal for Jay Wolfolk. Been so big for Virginia this season, but hasn't thrown a lot here in the NCAA tournament. Entrusted into a major spot. Bases loaded, one out tie game at the bottom of the ninth. and Wyatt Lankford have tied this game for Florida in the bottom of the ninth. Intense moments for Kyle Teal and Virginia at the Men's College World Series in front of a packed house. How about this spot for Jay Wolfolk eventually? The sophomore from Chesterfield, Virginia. A couple seasons ago on the football gridiron, he started a game against Notre Dame. This is a major bind for this two-sport standout to enter into. I'd say, and, and you got no room for comfort right here. I mean, you're coming in one out, bases loaded. And, and you got to think, I mean, the last thing you want is, is for a kid to come in in this situation that hasn't thrown a lot in the last few weeks to fall behind. And you wonder how Florida attacks it. Now he's about two to one fastball to sliders against right handers. 
We'll see if he gets a right hander. Yeah, he will. Heyman will stay in this game, which you would expect in this spot. But do you turn him loose for first pitch thinking you're going to get a first pitch heater? Yeah, I, I think you do. So far in the tournament, one third of an inning, three hits and two runs. Wolfel to Luke Heyman. First pitch breaking ball backs up for ball one. And now it's a green light special, right? This is what you dream of if you're Luke Heyman. Get ready for a heater and let it rip. Ultra talented freshman facing Wolfel. 1 0. Down and away, 2 0. Caglione single through the shift. Rivera walked. Ryapel got hit by a pitch. It's 2 0, and there's nowhere to put Luke Heyman. Wolfolk deals. Heyman, center field. Caught. And Heyman's the hero. Florida walks it off with a ninth inning comeback. Bad day one, gents. How about those two ball games? Not a bad day one. This might be a fun week and a half. Gators come into the inning trailing it by two. Bases loaded, one out. Berkey, the freshman who's been so good all year, gets it done again. Just stayed down on it, used the middle of the field. A no doubt sack fly when it left his bat. And how about this Gator offense showing up? when they had to have an incredible finish to Homer in the eighth by Ryapel, a three spot in the ninth, including two huge home runs. Quite a performance by this Gator offense. It's the first time in men's college World Series history that the winners of each of the first two games trailed after eight innings.